Well, good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in with us here at Bridgeport Church Online. If you are new with us, thanks for checking us out for the first time. We'd love to know who you are, a little bit more about you. So if you navigate yourself to our website after service, there is a I'm new here form that uh, we encourage you to fill out so we can get to know who you are. And maybe if you uh, aren't new with us and it's been a while, maybe you don't think we have your contact information. Um, if you could also fill that out, we are keeping up to date with you guys uh, through email and other uh, avenues like that. So uh, go ahead and definitely go to the website and fill those things out uh, so that we can be in better contact with you. The other thing is, is if you aren't following any of our other social medias, make sure to follow those. Uh, those can also be found on our website. Check that out. There's a lot of new things that have changed and are updated on there. Um, so that is going to be the best way to stay connected during this season. Thank you so much for being faithful to Bridgeport Church. Uh, to Jesus, to yourself during this time, uh, being generous in your time uh, and your talents and your treasures. Thank you for uh, being generous in giving to us. Uh, we couldn't do this without you guys, so thank you. Uh, if you do give to Bridgeport and you're interested or for the first time, uh, you can do that by downloading the PushPay app. You can also text Bridgeport PDX to 77977, or you can also give a one-time gift on our website. Uh, so thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, let's worship together this morning. You are here moving in our midst and I worship you. I worship you. You are here Moving in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you, I worship you, cause you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart, and I worship you. And I worship you, and you are here, healing every heart, and I worship you, and I worship you, you are here, turning lives around, and I worship you, and I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way That is who you are. That is. 
Well, thank you so much again for being with us here at Bridgeport Church. My name is Jamie, and I am the associate pastor here. Um, we have been in a series, if you've been following along, called No Jesus, K-N-O-W, Jesus, No Jesus, where we've been looking at these different I am statements that Jesus says. So, you know, we want to know who Jesus is, so we go, okay, well, well, who does Jesus say he is? And so we looked at Jesus saying that he's the bread. We looked at him saying that last week he is the resurrection. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and the light of life. And we are finishing up that series today by looking at this statement that Jesus says. And he says, I am the true vine. So if you have your Bibles with me, uh, you can turn to John 15. Uh, if you have a hard, hard copy Bible, that's going to be on the right-hand side. If not, you can download a Bible app to your smartphone or just go straight to the internet. Um, and we are looking at John 15, starting in verse 1 and reading through verse 5. So Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So there's three things that Jesus is calling out here that I want to look at today uh, together. And the first one is who Jesus calls himself. Who does Jesus say he is? And he says, well, I am the true vine. And what's really cool is the Bible does these things like uh, keeps things similar all throughout. So like this vine and vineyard motif uh, or analogy or parable that Jesus is giving um, is something that's consistent throughout the Bible. It's used in a lot of different um, ways. And it's because it's really like it's culturally and contextually uh, applicable to the people. There's a lot of vineyards around and people who were gardeners and vineyard dressers, vine dressers. Um, in this area, so Jesus is using words and speaking to his disciples, the people in front of him, with terminology that they know. So he calls himself the true vine because I, these people have, have this history in this past with the idea of being rooted and being uh, connected in some sort of way. And for the people that Jesus is speaking to, that's the church, that's Israel, that's tradition and community and history. So when Jesus steps on the scene and he gathers his friends together and he says, I am the true vine, he's making a distinction uh, between, hey, the things that maybe you've been like, connected with and rooted in, uh, 
Root yourself in me instead. So Jesus makes this distinguishment uh, between uh, where we are rooted. And he alludes to this new covenant, which is uh, Jesus is telling this parable right before he's arrested and and, uh, crucified and rose again that we learned last week uh, for Easter. So he's alluding to this new covenant where Jesus has stepped onto the scene and is rewriting history and is fulfilling these promises that these people have heard of. Jesus comes in and says, I am the true vine. Attach to me, adhere to me, root yourself in me. And for us today, we take that as, shoot, that might not necessarily be the church. That might not be uh, the community around us. But what does it look like to adhere to Jesus, just Jesus, Jesus himself only, Jesus? And as the true vine, Jesus is the true connection to God. And that is the second thing that Jesus teaches us in this passage. Uh, Back in in verse 1, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. So Jesus tells us who God is as well. And in this scene, Jesus says that God is a gardener. What's really interesting to me, uh, well, it actually caught me off guard because uh, right into verse two, it says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And that's like violent to me. That does not sound like a loving, tender, uh, gracious God. That sounds like not very nice. And I don't feel like that's who I know God to be. So I did some searching and I found some really cool information that I have to share with you. I love looking up this stuff. I have, I've, it's so much fun to me. So I did it. I had fun. Um, and I found these commentaries and that word cuts off, um, is also, uh, you can also translate it, uh, as takes taken away. And perhaps a more accurate way to translate that is by looking at the ancient Greek word that's actually in this original text, and it's this word airo, and I'm not Greek, so I'm trying my best. Uh, And it's this word airo, and uh, whereas in some contexts, it does mean taken away. But I think contextually in this passage where Jesus is telling us, I am the true vine, adhere to me, root yourself in me, and showing us who God is, I think that a better um, translation, a more accurate translation for this passage is uh, the phrase rather than takes away is lifts up. So the idea that the father, the gardener, God, Uh, lifts up the unproductive branches uh, that are in the vineyard. So I want you to imagine with me for a second that you are a gardener, and we live here in the Willamette Valley, and so there's vineyards all over the place. Um, Imagine yourself walking through a vineyard. Uh, You are the tender and the taker, caretaker of this vineyard. And as you're walking up and down, maybe it's like sunset or something, and the sun is just at the perfect height in the sky and the temperature is exactly how you would want it and you're walking down this vineyard and all of a sudden you see a branch that has fallen uh, up from its seat here and has fallen toward the ground. Now if we read this passage uh, in the context that a gardener lifts up Uh, lifts up those branches, uh, the unproductive vines from the ground. We get a picture and an image of God kneeling down and coming to the level of this branch and lifting it up and replacing it in its spot amongst the other branches and the vine and uh, setting it in such a way that it receives the light. He tailors it and twists it and turns it in such a way that this branch can actually see the light and receive the light in order that it may grow and produce good fruit. So the image that we get of God in this is is God gets to our level and rather than violently and viciously chopping us away, cutting us away and tossing us to the side, God actually lifts us up. He iros us, if you will. And then the third thing that I think about is, well, what is my role to play in this? And fortunately, Jesus tells us um, 
because this this parable, as Jesus is talking about uh, why it's even important for there to be a vine and branches, uh, and it's that in order that they bear good fruit. And I think it's really easy to read this and go, oh my gosh, I have to, I have to produce. I got to bear fruit. I got to bear good fruit. I got to make sure that I get myself in the right position at the right time so that I get the light to be able to do and produce and blah, whatever, like whatever. And we get so wrapped up in thinking that it's on us to produce the fruit. But that's not actually what happens Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches, remain in me so that you can bear and produce good fruit. Guess whose job it is to produce the fruit? Not us. It's Jesus as the vine. So Jesus asking us to adhere to him, to cling to him, is actually saying, hey, that's the only thing I'm asking of you. I'm asking you to lean in, to cling to me, to know me, to get connected with me so that my life source might flow in and through you to produce the good fruit that you are intended and designed to bear. It's not on us to to maintain or manage the vine, but simply to just adhere to Jesus. And it might be, I don't know, if you're, if you're like me, I get to that point, I'm like, wow, this is really great. Look at all these three characters and their perfect role in this story. And then I'm like, well, why does it even matter that we bear fruit anyway? And maybe you're asking the same thing, like, okay, cool, so Jesus wants me to bear fruit? Thanks. Like, so I want us to jump down to, uh, we're still in, in uh, chapter 15. Jump down to verse 11 and 12, and it says this. Jesus says, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Jesus gives us two commands in this verse. One of them is to remain in him and the other is to love each other as he has loved us. And how does he love us? He brings joy. You know what kind of grapes are grown in vineyards? This is a trick question. No, it's not. The types of grapes that are grown in vineyards are grapes that make wine. And I'm not going to get into the whole process of winemaking and what a beautiful picture that is. But they make wine. Jesus steps onto the scene and he says, I would like to bring you life. I would like to bring you joy. I want to bear joy as a gift through you and make it complete and produce love, love each other. See, Jesus does this because he wants to show us that through the true vine, we get true friendship, true relationship, true enjoyment and pleasure of life. Jesus' first miracle was at a party. He was at a wedding, and he turned water into, you guessed it, wine. Jesus brought the party. He wants you to live and love your life, enjoy it to the fullest, to be and find completeness and wholeness in him by attaching and clinging yourself to him. And then he ends his ministry, or at least the night before he's arrested, he gathers his friends together to break bread and to drink wine together. He brings people together to show him what friendship is, that it's not just this me and my best friend Jesus sort of relationship that he wants to create with us, but it's so that we can bear fruit, produce and grow and change. Jesus wants us to, to uh, to bring us close to him for joy and friendship and life to the fullest. And maybe right now you are feeling like a branch that has been draped over and you are wilting on your side and you have not seen the sunlight in days and maybe you feel like you've been trampled off in the dirt and you're just laying there and it feels really desperate and desolate. I want you to know that our gardener, God the the Father, comes in and does not disregard you, does not toss you to the side because you're not producing good fruit, but God actually intends that you produce the good fruit that Jesus has to offer. 
So God lifts you up, and maybe you need the encouragement today that you can have and find joy and light in life. God comes by and lifts you up, places you intentionally so that you can bear good fruit, the good fruit that is joy, the completion of joy, and is love, is friendship and enjoyment and laughter that when you feel like it's the end of the rope or you're a failure or you're not good enough or maybe you've been struggling trying to to manage on your own and try and produce really good fruit. Today, I think God wants to remind all of us that that's not our job, that it gets to be the gardener's job to, to go through and fix, and prune, and maintain. So cling tight to Jesus. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. We just have to cling to Jesus and trust that we have a God who will lift us up into refreshment and warmth and light on us to to bear the fruit of joy and love and praise God that all he's asked of us is to remain in Jesus and to love each other. Lord, I don't want to rush out of it in my own strength when you're right here. And Lord, I don't want to rush out of it in my own strength when you're right here i'm not in a hurry when it comes to your presence when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your voice i'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness i'm starting to know you are speaking you are speaking Lord I I want to love like you I want to feel what you feel I want to see what you see feel what you feel I want to see what you see I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice I'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness I'm starting to know are I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your 
spirit when it comes to your presence when it comes to your voice i'm learning to listen just to rest in your nearness i'm starting to know 